Hey there! If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. I'll say that again. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast, oh, yep, with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Now it's time for the Big Bad Broadcast. Quiet on the set, quiet everybody, legendary TV host. Well, hi there, this is Bob Eubanks. Countdown. And go, Mr. Eubanks. So one time on the newlywed game, we had a couple, and and the husband's name was Lane's Merge. <laughs> Good name that is. But I got to tell you, his wife was so arrogant and so mean to him that Lane's didn't merge. Not a- <laughs> 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 Oh, that's perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to welcome you to Bitchin' Baby Boomers. Good afternoon, Bitchin' Baby Boomers. We got a cult. 1,750 people. Next January 6th, we're taking over Facebook. (laughs) (laughs) Bitchin' Zuckerbergs. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we got a great show for you today. We got a legendary boomer, and we also got the regular uh, group of clowns. We got Mike Grief. Pirate Dean Mike. Of, oh, Pirate Mike, sorry. I'm, <laughs> and we got Joe Silky, the mind reader. I knew you were going to say that. And we have <laughs> Craig Mitchell, our Yoda, the guy who knows everything. Everything. Joker. He's the Joker. Joker. Come on, that looks like a paddle. Are you spanking somebody? What the heck are you doing? <laughs> hey, it's, my, it's, my, it's my lever. Joker. 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 I don't yeah. want to tell you what I thought that was. <laughs> okay. I thought you had to have a raincoat on. All right. So, <laughs> anyway, wood. for the people wood on the podcast, he was just fondling something wooden. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> it's a hairbrush, he says. Just yeah. like Joe's friend Eunice. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're going to yeah, start off real. today with something which is like boomer toys. Toys that we all had when we were kids Yay. and we loved and Yay. probably forgot some of them until we bring them up. Here he comes, here he comes, greatest toy you've ever seen. And his name is Mr. Machine. He is real, he is real, and for you he is ideal. And his name is Jeez. Yeah, Mr. Machine. Somebody Mr. went crazy Machine. with an Erector set. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that's so weird because that's the only song I remember every word. He is fun. He is real. He is made by Ideal, and they call him Mr. Machine. Who had one of those? Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> the worst part is that picture was taken last year. He just got no. it. He exactly. just got one. He just got one for Christmas last year. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know why Mr. Machine's mouth opened like that. That was a little weird. Well, well it seems that is like <laughs> no worse than having a screw for a nose. His yeah. jaw was detachable. Is that why you bought him, Joe? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My favorite toy of all times, which was the famous worst toy of all times was the Monday Night Vibrating Football Game, or whatever it was called. All right, let me explain how this little piece of crap worked. Okay, so you have 22 little players with little pieces of nylon on the bottom. You set up the defense for the kick, for the kickoff. Then you set up your offense in a formation. Then you have a little teeny metal thing that shoots a felt football. That's not easy to say. Down to the other end, but nobody can pick it up because they don't have any arms. Then you hit the button, and they all go in different directions. 
I, I can see a kid screaming, go long, go long. <laughs> they, they go in different directions. Some guys go backwards. Sometimes the guy with the ball turns around and goes the wrong oh, way. They don't make to the sides. So, they, so how, the did, whole how thing did you win? How would you play it? It won yeah. when you threw it away. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, winner, the winner was the guy who took the game and smacked the other guy in the head with it. And then, and then no, the, the exciting part of the game was after you had two minutes of vibration where they all went in different directions, you got to set up 22 other players again. Yes. Like Hal Spear, the late great comic, said, you threw it away, and then one day you found it in your sister's room, and she was sitting on it going, touchdown. <laughs> 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 oh man, what what was your favorite toys, Mike? Well, I like the uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots was was uh, definitely with Rock'em yeah. Sock'em Robot. But and here, like say today, they talk about you know video games being violent, but think about it. Here's a game where the way to win is you had to knock the other guy's head off. You know, <laughs> not just knock him down. You had to knock his head off. You know what I mean? That's like like bat, like battling tops. It's like so they talk about video games being violent. We had some pretty violent games. Not well. true. It was knock his block off. Knock nice. his block. Yeah. Oh, so what yeah. was he like? Lego? You knock his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I didn't, the only block was his head. <laughs> yeah, they should have just go. You know, it would be like calling it. You hit him and he shits his shorts. You know, but. <laughs> I used to love the noise it made. Ah, yeah. right? <laughs> ah. Oh, yeah, it's it's good noise. I forgot about that. And then, yeah. uh, what was your favorite toys, Craig? Well, this is kind of embarrassing, but uh, my favorite toy was aptly named Captain Action. All right. <laughs> Yeah, he, looks like, he looks like he saw a lot of action in his life. <laughs> he, looks like Captain, he looks like Captain Osteoporosis. <laughs> Captain yeah. Traction. Captain Traction. There Captain you go. Well, well, here's the thing about Captain Action, man, is he turned into any superhero you want. You just bought the costume. Spider-Man, oh. Superman, Batman. Okay. So Come they on. should just call them Captain Plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> Captain, he don't have the rights for that. That's right. <laughs> how many how many dolls did you own, Craig? Yes, Craig. How many dolls? Let's just say that Mike's monkey army would be envious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the other great game was Operation. Operation. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Game? Which yeah, this game that's... would have been a lot better if that little thing didn't run on a D battery, if it ran 220 volts. <laughs> I got sued for malpractice on, you know, on but like obviously if you look at the thing he has a very serious hernia problem you can't even see his junk <laughs> God, God, do, we want to, do we want to see his junk look at his junk I will tell you though this is a true story I bought one of those for my goddaughter when she was 7 years old and she's now a surgeon and she has it actually hanging in her office which is kind of cool really but the, that's, yeah, that's a true story Really? Yeah. yeah. Really? So, but every time you touch your diploma, the nose lights up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's with that red nose? How drunk was this guy? Obviously, he got drunk, and he's on your operating table. Yeah, pretty Come much on. Pretty much. if you remove a rib without anesthesia, you're going to do more than your nose light up. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you have, Joe? G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Hey, there you go. Oh. There you yeah. go. The man's man's toy. Oh, All right. What do you mean it's a man's toy? That was a man's toy with his kung fu grip. Not in an Italian household. That was a doll. No, an Italian household with a doll was like whack him Frankie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> comes up behind you, whack him. It, 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 it comes with the shovel and the bag of lye. That's <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Whack him, Frankie. How you doing? Yeah, but G.I. Joe could go into space and stuff. He was cool. Yeah. That's right. And underwater, you had the, the deep sea diver thing. and the. Uh, what year was G.I. Joe? What? 64. 64. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. when he came out, but he they, they're still making him to this day, I think. Oh, oh he yeah. came out, huh? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, that's well, that's, yeah. That's 1964. Joe. 1964, I was 14. So yeah, that I was still playing probably, with GI Joe. Come on, <laughs> I was probably <laughs> playing with myself in Playboy magazines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Monty Hoffman. Everybody said he couldn't uh, he couldn't afford to play, but he waited for the National Geographic. I know what John's playing. 
What? What? No, I interrupted you. My mistake. Go ahead. <laughs> Please. No, but my, my you say he said he, 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 other kids were saving up for a bike. He was saving up for a trip to New Guinea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, what my, other toys were in there? Oh, you, uh, Joe, John, when you were fourteen, come on. Oh yeah, I, I have one of those right now in my bedroom. I swear really? to God! I Sorry, swear to really? God! It's the <laughs> it's the it's the <laughs> best game ever. Let That's, me tell you something. I used to play in a league. And guys would come to my house. We'd have four of those set up on the table. I was like 25. And this one guy, he came and he had all – he'd bring his own players. And they were all dressed like the Islanders. And certain ones had curved sticks. It was hysterical. And uh, now, when it ever went in the corner – I'm showing this on my mouse, which you can't see. When it ever went in the corner, the puck would just stop. <laughs> and you couldn't get it. So now the new one has that – your wing – has a curved thing so you can get to that and center it out front. That's why I had to buy a new one. Uh-huh. And then they went a step further. They put a ball bearing in the puck oh. so it would go fast. The problem with it was that it was never really even. They always warped. So you you'd get like an open slap shot from the crease and the <laughs> stick would hit the board. <laughs> And it just stopped dead. But that was a great game. That's the sad game. thing is you have one in your bedroom right now. I know. Is it on, really, is it on that chair? Is it on the chair really, that helps you stand up? It's really <laughs> pathetic. That's, it's next to my. I want to go there. <laughs> oh man! How about slinkies? Anyone have a slinky? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look, of course, Beaver's I, brother had one. Oh, are you kidding? <laughs> come on, who didn't catch their pubic hair in the slinky? Come on. <laughs> you. <laughs> What? Then, I, never, <laughs> never, never mind. And they had them. Now they're really out of plastic. They look like the cup you're drinking out of. The slinkies <laughs> are now plastic. It's Linky. It's Linky. Hey, I have, and, I have the theme song. Here we go. Who walks the stair without a care and shoots so high in the sky? Bounce up and down just like a clown. Everyone knows it's Linky. It's Linky. It's Linky. For fun, it's the best of the toys. It's Linky. It's Linky. The favorite of girls and boys. Everyone wants a Slinky. You want to get a Slinky. Well, Under a dollar. Shit, that, that piece of shit. That piece of shit was a leftover from a machine wait, shop. Wait, some wait. Guys- yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It was under a dollar. It was 99 cents. Oh. But if you watch that video again, I never noticed this all these years. The stairs are this big. Yeah. Yeah. People don't have stairs that big. That's why it never worked. Mine would go down three stairs and then roll down the whole stairs and get, like, dog hair in it. Then you'd pick it up and it would get, like, it would never go back together. Once you got a kink in it. He, yeah. When it was stacked up, it would always be like hanging over to the side. I just noticed something new from the video too. It shoots up in the air. I've never seen. I've never noticed that. Yeah, before. you throw it up in the air. You hold on to one end, and it comes back. You're trying to hit the face with a metal coil. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do that anymore. You yeah. have to wear like goggles and a helmet. Yeah. Do you know which was the most dangerous toy they ever made in my era? What? One darts. Hot Wheels. Oh, oh Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels. Yeah, dangerous. Not, I mean, because after about you know an hour, you're tired of racing the cars. Those tracks would come out, and man, when you got whipped with them, it left marks on your back. I mean, we'd have track fights. Anybody is that? Just me? That explains okay. a lot, Craig. Yeah, yeah no. I know, I know. Again, <laughs> again, what year? Track sixty nine. Yeah, yeah. When I was I at had, Woodstock, I was some yeah. with Hot Wheels. John, John had tracks, but they were a different kind of tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Never, never did hard stuff like that. Never did that. What other toys do we have? A oh, mousetrap yeah. was a great mouse mouse trap. Trap. That was they great. Did. They made a movie based on that. Did they? Yeah, yeah nobody watched it, but they made a movie. Uh, really? It's like it's like all based on Rube Goldberg, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Rube was Goldberg. Nathan, I think it's mousetrap. Yeah, Nathan Lane. I love so. that game. I must have had seriously in my life eight of those. <laughs> really? I swear to God, I love that game. I Are thought it was compulsive, a little obsessive compulsive, John. I had eight of them. Yeah, I definitely, definitely had eight of them. I, I, I had a lot of them. I had, I, had a lot of money. I, yeah, I had eight of them. I loved that game. I was obsessed with that and Clue. Yeah, that that I need a, I need another mouse trap. <laughs> <laughs> Let me buy the candy more. Yeah, yeah, yeah mouse trap. What do you want for That's Christmas, John? I, I need another mouse trap. There, there was a uh, there was also a game that was like Crazy Clock. Which was like mousetrap. The guy 
you, you build it as you go along, and then wow. you'd hit the thing, and you, you would wake up this guy, and it was another one of these Rube Goldberg things where stuff would fall and roll around, and nobody remembers it. Okay. You know what I remember the most was uh, you had the Lincoln Logs. Right. And, yeah. and then a barrel full of monkeys. Those were barrel great. full of monkeys were great. Right. That was I had 12 of those. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, it started my I wanted, to build, I wanted to build major monkey film formation. <laughs> we'll talk. Do you later, like John. that creepy crawler thing, right? Creepy. I love the creepy crawlers, man. They had it was inside like little molds, and you poured the stuff in, and you bake it, and it had glow in the dark, and make spiders and all kinds of cool. I like to scare people with them, leave them so my mother could find and it. And how about girls' toys? Easy bake oven. There you go. Oh, That's yeah, it. Sure. You I mixed mean, up. You mixed up stuff for like an hour and a half, and a little tight. Pie tin that looked like, like a petri dish. Yeah. You put in this thing and you cooked it on a light bulb. Yeah, that's how that's how I learned how to cook from my prison food. <laughs> I mean, I, well, you laugh, but I made a loaf of whole wheat bread in an easy bake oven. No, it really? took two weeks and fourteen light bulbs, but I did. <laughs> Just happened to have a yeast infection that week, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what other what other other, other girl stuff? There used to remember girls used to have a thing called paper dolls. Where they would cut out the dolls with yeah. little tabs, and then they put them on like a cardboard doll and bend it back. It was like the stupidest thing. And ever. they would dress them. They would dress yeah. them. Right? Yeah. yeah. What would what were those things that you I guess there's no stupider than a GI Joe doll where you dressed it in costumes. Well, it's they, an action figure, <laughs> not a doll. Yo yos. That was my thing. <laughs> Yo yo's. Yo yo's. My dad yo-yos. was like one of those Duncan yo yo guys. Uh, and man, I could do everything with a yo yo. Seriously, to this day. And I have, I'll tell you, I have 120 yo yo's. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, have one, I have one yo yo that's $120. It's perfectly balanced aluminum with a hickory axle that you can change. Okay. Well, now we found that guy. Oh my spent God. $120 on a yo yo. Yo yo's and mouse traps. Yeah. Oh my God. No. Yeah, boy. I feel really stupid playing with G.I. Joe after that. <laughs> you go to my go to Antiques Roadshow with your yo yo. How much is this worth? I have some valuable yo yos. I have a Duke of Hazard yo yo. A Duke of Hazard. Yeah, I have a Does it have little shorts? No, the yo yo is actually a drag slick with like a mag wheel. Like I have an Eddie Murphy uh forty eight hours yo yo. What? I have yeah, I have all these promo yo-yos. Wow. I never realized how sick you were, John. Don't, don't, don't they have the butterfly? <laughs> the yeah, butterfly. The Duncan butterfly, which is good for sleeping tricks. Yeah. And, Imperial. Uh, the Imperial. That, that was a the regular. Kind of standard. That was kind of the standard, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. butterfly, Imperial. Um, I could walk the dog with it and do the what was the one to rock to like you put it around and it rocked in the middle. Rock the baby. Rock the baby, rock yeah. The, the tightrope. Go walk back the and dog. Forth the rope. Sleep walk the dog. Sleeper. Sleep. Wake up the sleep. My, uh, my, my cousin my it. cousin told me this story. He he grew up in Levittown. Yeah. And uh the movie theater, they had the Duncan Yo Yo guys come. My dad, that's what my dad okay. So what happened was the kids are there. They're all excited. It's like a Saturday afternoon. Duncan Yo-Yo Champ comes out, and he starts doing stuff, and he's doing loop-de-loops, and all of a sudden he throws it. The string breaks, and it hits some kid right in the head and knocked him out. <laughs> Those were okay. Great. Okay, so my daughter, when she was little, fell and cut her hand really badly and had to go get stitches. You remember that? Yes. And then when she used to love watching me do yo-yo tricks. So one day I was walking the dog in front of her. Oh, she no. grabbed the string. It flew up and hit her in the head. Mm. So she had a big swollen thing on her head, a cut arm, and we had to take her to the doctors for something, and they wanted to question us because <laughs> they thought we were abusing my daughter. Oh, man. I'll tell you, I don't know about that. I just know the string as a kid was really good for garroting. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I promised you a very special guest, and now that you heard about all our toys that we're growing up, we are so proud to have this guest on the show tonight. (laughs) He's very special. He's done it all. He was a child model. He was a DJ, an actor, a legendary game show host, and a promoter. He's even been in the radio. 
Let's welcome Bob Eubanks. Woo! Hey, guys, how are you? Thank you. Hey, Bob. So uh, I read somewhere that you were a child actor and you got to meet your idol, Gene Autry. Yeah, I wasn't an actor, though. I was uh, just uh, like a photo model. And uh, Autry had a company called Paddock Clothing. And uh, I was doing some photo modeling when I was a little kid for J.C. Penney's and Pard Dog Food. So anyway, Autry had a company called Paddock Clothing, and he wanted to shoot a shot with me and another young man. So one of my big idols is I met Gene. I was there New Year's Day when I was 11 years old. We shot for Paddock Clothing. And then many years later, I was working for him because he owned Channel 5 in Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, so he was one of my big young idols, I'll tell you that. Well, I have my Gene Autry watch. Oh, my God. Gosh, look at that. And <laughs> <laughs> with the gun that moves up and down as a, as a minute hand. I see. Signed your pal, Gene Autry. You're Made a lonesome it. fellow, aren't you? Made <laughs> <it>. <laughs> my, my, grand, my grandfather actually knew Gene Autry. And you know, Autry was in, uh, I'll tell you a couple of Autry stories. Autry was in the Christmas parade, and he was riding in front of Santa Claus. And he kept hearing the kids go, here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus. And uh, he went home and wrote, here comes Santa Claus. But uh, really? One of my really? favorite stories is that he was drinking and they took his license away from him and his car away from him. And so he was with Johnny Grant, the guy that worked for him at KMPC. And they were on Van Nuys Boulevard and they were speeding and a cop pulled him over. And before the officer could get off his motorcycle and get to the front, they had traded places. <laughs> <laughs> and so Johnny Grant had a job for the rest of his life. <laughs> Designated wow. drunk driver. <laughs> yeah. So you were born in Flint, Michigan, right? Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> you know, my parents were hillbillies from, from Missouri, and when the Depression came along, uh, they all moved up to Michigan to make cars, and then the war came along, and they all moved to California to make airplanes. So. I had my second birthday in California, so I'm basically a California. California. Well, you got a kid from Michigan who ends up with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in front of Groman's Chinese Theater, which is prime real estate. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> you can't ask you know why, more than that. You know why it's in front of the Egyptian Theater? It's because I was up on a ladder cleaning the marquee, and these two guys came along and hit the ladder, and I'm rolling down Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> so I get back up and I just use the broom. So I'm up there cleaning again. And here come these two guys again. Only this time I see them coming. And just as they got there, I put my feet on the outside of the rungs, zip, zip down, grab the broom and hit this guy right in the back of the head. Well, the manager, Mr. Michael John was walking out of the box office at that time. And he saw me hit the guy and he said, you're fired. So when I got my star, I wanted it right in front of the Egyptian where I got fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So when you started your career in, uh, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just going from research that I did, you, uh, you started as a DJ, correct? Yeah, I was a disc jockey uh, at a 250-watt radio station in Oxnard, California. Uh, 200 watts went into the ocean and 50 watts went to the cemetery next door. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can, one time I had a big rock and roll album giveaway contest. I must have mentioned it 200 times. And I finally said, because I couldn't think of who, okay, I'll give them to the first person that calls. And nobody called. <laughs> <laughs> so I made up a name and took the albums home. And I realized that I was talking to myself. <laughs> Bob, so, Bob, we've all been there as comedians. Yes. You do oh, yeah. Morning shows, so they go. We'll give well, it one more. One we'll morning, I got off the air and I drove to the hot news station in LA. And I could, I just want to see what the big guys look like. And I could tell they were having a disc jockey meeting, and the all night man had a sore back, and nobody wanted to sit in for him. So I went up to the program director and I said, uh, Hi there, I'm a disc jockey. He says, do you belong to the union? I said, no, but I can. So I borrowed $360. I joined the union. I went on the air that night, and I was there for seven years. Wow. <laughs> and then you eventually got prime time in the morning, right? Drive time, right? Yeah, I worked mornings, and, and uh, I worked several different shifts there. But, you know, I was there with the big guys. You know, sometimes you're judged by the people you run with. I was there with Casey Kasem out of Detroit and Dick Biondi from Chicago and Wink Martindale, and then me, Bob Eubanks from Oxnard. 
And, uh, <laughs> so I realized I'd better do something different. And that's when I opened the nightclubs, the Cinnamon Cinders, and that led me to the Beatles and the whole nine yards. Yeah, and you were, I mean, you were a producer, you produced some amazing shows at the Hollywood Bowl, right? You produced the Rolling Stones, the Beatles. Yeah, I, I did the Beatles for three years. I'm the only right. living person to have produced a Beatle concert all three years they toured. And that picture you see right there, that was the press conference at our uh, Cinnamon Cinder nightclub in 1964. Wow. Uh, and yeah, and I, I was lucky enough to get the Beatles, and that worked really well for me, but it made KRLA number one. So the second year, I went to KRLA, and I said, let's make it KRLA and Bob Eubanks present the Beatles. And so the second, third year, I made more money than the Beatles did. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> and you wow. did, did, is that true? Did you brought the Rolling Stones in it, too? Well, I, yeah, I did Rolling Stones in Long Beach, but Jagger and I didn't get along too well. First year, I paid him 4500 The second year, I paid him 20000 And uh, But I did every major rock and roll act, really, because yeah, of my success. Yeah, I mean, success. I'm, looking at this, I'm looking at this list. It was Elton John, Barry Manilow, Supremes. <laughs> Well, let's talk about Bobby Elton Martin. John and Barry Manilow. You want to? Yeah. yeah. Sure. They're the biggest two pains in the patoot I've ever worked with. I, <laughs> I, had, I uh, was in Las Vegas, had Elton John in Las Vegas. We had 8,000 kids in there. And this guy comes up to me. He says, we have a problem. I said, what's your problem, man? He says, Elton hates cops. And he won't go on the stage if he can see one in a uniform. I said, oh, God. So I went to the Las Vegas Police Department. I said, can you disappear until I get this guy on stage? And they did. You know, but when he came off stage, I had seven uniforms at the bottom of the stairs waiting for him. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Barry Manilow at Anaheim Convention Center, he had a 10-second walk from backstage to the stage, and there were kids behind the stage, and he made me remove 214 kids so, I, so he could make a 10-second walk. Oh, God. What do you know oh. about that? <laughs> but every, everybody else I worked with, they were really neat. I mean, 99% of the acts uh, were really, really good. So how was working with Dolly Parton? That's my only thing in show business I never accomplished. I always wanted to open for her. <laughs> oh, Dolly. Uh, yeah, I was in the country music business, and, and I wanted – I, I wanted to book an act that had Dolly in it and Porter Wagner at that time. So I went to Porter's agent, shiny something in Nashville, and I said, I want some dates on Porter. He said, well, Bob, Porter is very busy. How many dates would you like? I said, 100. He said, we can make that work out. So <laughs> the first date out in Long Beach, California, I, I could never talk to Dolly. Uh, with Porter around, but he was on stage. So Dolly walked into the dressing room and she says, I'm going to leave Porter and I want you to manage me. I went, wow. oh my God, I just committed for a hundred days of Porter away. But anyway, I ended up managing Dolly for two years. Uh, she was wonderful. She was wonderful. That's uh, what I hear that she's the nicest person, right? Yeah, she is just a sweetheart. She really is. And, and, then you, and Merle really Haggard talented. too, right? I was with Haggard for 10 years. Everywhere right. Merle went, I went for 10 years, and we never had a crossword. Uh, it was a real joy. You know, and, and, you know, one time we were down in Texas, and he was in the Holiday Inn. That's where he always stayed. And he got a death threat phone call. So he said to me, Bob, he said, uh, put a stool up on the stage. I said, okay. So I'm walking backstage. I'm pretty sure I look up there, and Haggard says, I got a death threat, and if you're out there, come on, man. I'm ready for you. He had a revolver laying on the stool beside him. That's my kind of guy. Yeah. Like my, my, Pirate Mike's kind of guy for sure. Yeah, no, Mer, Merle and I got along wonderfully well. I did George Jones and Tammy Wynette. One time they took George's uh, license and, and car away from him because of drinking, and so he got arrested on the turnpike on his riding lawnmower. <laughs> <We're in Nashville laughs> to get a drink. Oh, that's funny. Tell us how being a member of the Professional Rodeo and Cowboy Association. Well, I've always been interested in, in rodeo, and I became a, uh, a competitor. I was a team roper. For, if my kids lived off what I won, they'd have starved to death. 
<laughs> uh, you know, I did the rodeo, and and my knowledge of horses and the rodeo helped me uh, in the television world because I then ended up doing the broadcasting for the national finals rodeo for several years. Wow. But I had a good time with the rodeo guys. Uh, yeah, that's me. And there's Floppy, my my wonderful rodeo horse. There, <laughs> uh, it was a good time. It, and uh, but I, you know, had both hips replaced and extensive back surgery. Ooh. And so uh, I I really got messed up that wise. And I'll tell you about that a little later on if you want. Right. Sure. So in 1966, you got a call from Chuck Barris, right? Yeah, telling you about a new show. Why don't you give us like from the minute he called, like what well, that was least, all about. Yeah, these two guys, Nicholson and Mira, went out to lunch, and they wrote on a napkin: "Husbands predict wives, wives predict husbands." They gave it to ABC. ABC gave it to Chuck Barris, who had the dating game on the air at the time, and they auditioned every disc jockey in town. And later on, they would audition weathermen. Sajak and and David Letterman were weathermen. Oh, wow. And then it's actors, but then it was disc jockeys, and I had never done a game show. But uh, one of the couples that auditioned with me, well, I'll tell you the story. There were four couples on the stage, and the ABC guys came out. They were sitting in a front row. And couple number one was an unknown comedian named Don DeLuise and his <laughs> wife, Carol. But down at the end was a cute little blonde. And the question I asked was, uh, what's your favorite nickname for your husband? And she said, Num Nuts. <laughs> and the ABC boys rolled over backwards, went upstairs, and bought the show without a pilot based oh. on Num Nuts. <laughs> Num Nuts. That's great. That's really great. And how old were you? How old were you then? You were young, right? You were like, what, 27 or something? I was 28, I think, when 28? I started the Newly Red Game. Yeah. Wow. Wow. It, it, was a, it was a wonderful time. I enjoyed it. I have a lot of funny stories, you know. Uh, I ask questions, but I wouldn't say make love because I didn't think you should have to explain that to your children until you were ready to do so. So Sinatra had a hit record called Making Whoopi. Right. And I said, let's say Whoopi. So Whoopi became a four letter word. And then, <laughs> so that's I, how I, it all I, came I, down. I still don't understand what it is. <laughs> that's because you wear that goofy ass thing on your head. What is that? That's my that's my schmata. My schmata. I see. Okay. <laughs> so back then, I mean, you know, are you married? Me. Which hey, John, are you married? Who me? Yeah. Uh, no. No. But Which I one of you is married? Mitch, are you married? We've no, all been married. married. We've all been I'm married. married. <laughs> I'm, I'm married. I'm married. I'm married. You're married. Okay. Yeah. If I ask your wife this question. In the hamburger world of romance, would you say that Mike is a Big Mac, a quarter pounder, or where's the beef? (laughs) (laughs) Or or, or an in and out. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) you wish. (laughs) Uh, Let's see, what's it, a quarter pounder? uh, Uh, I don't want an answer, forget it. (laughs) Well, it's funny, you know, Bob, I used to work cruise ships, and we were in Bermuda one summer, and uh, the Bermuda government came on and said, you're not allowed to have any professional shows while you're in port, and we're in port for four days. So they No professional shows what? Whatsoever on the ship for four days while you're in Bermuda. We want the people off the ship. Oh, okay. So it's a huge loss of revenue. So I said, I think I could do the newlywed game. So I was actually the one that actually brought it to the cruise ships. Uh-huh. And, yeah, so and before they got sued about it. But uh <laughs> But anyway, I, and I used to come, commissions. I used to go with questions. And this is and you would appreciate this because you were a host for years. At one point I'd have like a really good looking woman on stage, one of the wives, so I'd look at her and I'd go, You come home early and you find your husband dancing in your lingerie, what do you do? And she'd get like all flustered and I'd go, Oh, that's not one of the questions. I'm just curious. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I learned I learned a great deal about doing the newlywed game. I learned that uh, the people don't want to know about you; they want you to know about them. Right. And I happen to think the reason that actors uh, do not make very good hosts is because they don't want to let anybody else be funny. Right. 
And uh, so I learned how to make people talk. And right. most of the time it's just staring at them, you know, and laughing with them, not at them. Mm -hmm. uh, to, the, to this day, when I walk in to have a meeting with someone, when I walk in to have the meeting, I look at what's on the desk. I look at what's on the wall. And before the meeting starts, I ask them a question about that. Is that your daughter? Oh, she's really pretty. The moment that you show interest in them, the meeting all of a sudden gets much better. So people don't want to know about you. They want you to know about them. Nice. Well, as as comedians, that's what we always say, the difference between a Jay Leno being a comedian on the show and a Johnny Carson, where Johnny yeah. Carson would just let you be the funny guy. He never and then give you the stairs. You. Right. Yeah. You know. I learned from Carson. I learned about expressions. You know, right. you can say a thousand words with a, you know, <laughs> right. uh, and, and Carson was very good at that. Uh, he really was. Yeah, he was the king of that for sure. Um, so what were some of your greatest answers that you got on the show or questions? I mean, you must have some that really uh, stick out. Uh, I, I, I don't have anything in my mind right now. Uh, is it the is it true that the one of the the famous one that everyone always talks about? You know the ever happened? Yeah, I the, asked, what, "Where's the strangest place you've ever made whoopee?" And she used the a word. I said, "No, no, no, Olga, I need a, a location." <laughs> <laughs> so years later, when they're going to do the movie about Chuck Barris, they called Olga, and uh, they said, "Olga, we're going to put that clip in the movie." She says, please don't. I'm a grandmother. Oh my and I said, well, it's worth $5,000. She said, you go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and hey, I, had lady walk up, I had a lady walk up to me the other day, and she said, uh, how would you like to have soup or sex? I said, I'll take soup. <laughs> 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 you know, Bob, when I want when I, I talked to you about this on the phone, but it's really, really true. And uh, uh, I, I, when I was like going to school, I remember coming home and watching the dating game and Millywood game. My sister was about 17, 16 at the time. She was nuts for both shows. And I told you, she used to go because they didn't have posters back then or whatever. She went to these magazines. She would cut your picture out in Jim Lang's picture, and they were all over her <laughs> wall, all over her mirror. I mean, I was wondering, how, how did you deal with that kind of really sudden popularity? She was lonesome, wasn't she? <laughs> Still is. <laughs> she went on to become a stalker. <laughs> well, my oldest son is 62. He's a retired L.A. County fireman, and he works with me. I travel. I have two shows. I have a live game show. And then I, uh, I put together a Beatles show called Backstage with the Beatles. So he travels with me. I have a daughter in the restaurant business. I have a son who's the number one stunt driver in the industry. Wow. Transformers, Too Fast, Too Furious, all of those. He worked on Dukes of Hazard for eight years. And so my oldest is 62. My daughter is 60. My stuntman son is 58. And my other son is 17. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. There you go. Good for you. So where I, am can, married, where, where, I am married to a hot chick, man. She's the number one wedding planner in Southern California. <laughs> wow. Where can so, we see the Beatles show? Well, we, I travel the Beatles show. It's called Backstage with the Beatles. I don't have anything booked right now because of the pandemic, you know. Right. But uh, it, it's, a, it's a fun show. I, I tell seldom or never before heard stories about the Beatles that lead up to music. And I have a Beatle band on stage with me. Uh, an example of that would be uh, when the Beatles broke up, McCartney was pretty upset and he had a dream one night and his mother was in the dream. And she said, Paul, don't worry about it, Paul. Just just let it be. Bam, music. Oh. <laughs> so I tell stories that lead up to music. I mean, like when Ringo was born, he weighed 10 pounds. And 30 seconds after he was born, the Germans dropped a bomb near the hospital. You know, I mean, there's some crazy stories about these oh, guys. Yeah. They were trying to get him from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you also did a lot of sitcoms, right? You did a little guest appearance on uh, Fresh. Yeah, Prince Fresh Prince. I did. Yeah, but I'm not an actor. My 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 kids and, set me down um, one time and said, "Don't act anymore." <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you 
you got Macaulay Culkin checked into the hotel, right? Uh, at Home Alone yeah, too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot all about Home Alone too. Yeah, <laughs> I still get checks for that. You know, every once in a while, I get a, I'll get one a residual for four cents. You know. <laughs> so what was what was you the guys, scene? You get them too. What was the scene? You were. You were Somebody's hosting the show, right? During the, if I remember right, during the, what was that noise? You know, I I hosted the game show. <laughs> I did newlywed game off and on for five decades. But I did card sharks, and uh, Bob right. Barker and I we shared a dressing room, and he was there, I wasn't, and vice versa. And there was this big ornate plaque up on the wall, and being the jerk that I am, I took it off the wall and put it under the couch. And I'm out at the ranch, and we're roping. I get an emergency phone call from Jonathan Goodson. Where's Barker Sling? I said, what? <laughs> he's, 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 what are you talking about? He said, don't mess with me. He won't go on until we find it. This guy was going to not go on. I said, oh, for God's sake, it's under the, under the couch. <laughs> said, oh. and, and the thing said WGMC on it. And I said, what does that mean? He says, world's greatest MC. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> and he wouldn't go on until I, they found it. Oh, that's so funny. That's just so funny. So, okay, so you did it for five decades, right? That's incredible. Yeah, off and on for five decades I did that. Uh, and it was it was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, they're going to do it again. And I called the lady who's producing it over at Sony, and I said, you know, I, I'm too old to host it, but I, I would really love to be a consultant because I learned so much about how to make people talk. And she says, "No, nah, we don't want it." Bam! <laughs> so they're gonna they're gonna do it without me. They're lost. This is uh, okay. they're, lo- they're lost for sure. And That's you know what they, they say: the remake is never good as the original. It just doesn't work out yeah. that way. You, you, you know, know there's uh, a certain magic. There's a certain magic that you get from doing it for all of those years. Well, I produced Buddy Hackett's "You Bet Your Life," and, it, and Hackett couldn't stand anybody right. to be funny. He couldn't stand it, you know, and he would just put him to the ground. <clears throat> but he was a funny guy. He was at, uh, at in, in Las Vegas, and he hated smoking. And he was at the Hilton, and there was a guy in the front row lit up, and he stopped the show, and he said, hey, stupid, put that damn thing out. It was the president of U.S. Rubber. And uh, <laughs> Hackett had to find another casino to work in. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> I cleaned that up for you, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why they, that's why the biggest thing when you're on cruise ships and people go, "Oh, the comedian was a little dirty," and I go, "Who do you like?" They go, "Buddy Hackett." I'm <laughs> like Buddy Hackett, and that comic was a little dirty. Are you kidding me? I'm writing a book oh, of yeah, short stories a- about big people, and Hackett invited me over to his house one time for a little party. Glenn Ford was there. Cary Grant walked in. And uh, he said, I have to sit next to you at dinner. I said, why? He says, well, Barbara and I watch the newlywed game every night. I said, Cary Grant watches the newlywed game? He says, we're a real couple. I said, what, what do you mean you're a real couple? He says, we only have one toothbrush. A little more than I wanted to know about TMI. Yeah. <laughs> So how many shows were there, like, in a season when you did that? A newlywed game? Yeah. Yeah, we shot 35 days. We'd shoot five shows a day for 35 days, and then they would rerun half of those to get 52 weeks. Oh, wow. 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 It was well, I'm sure, a piece I'm sure of work. you be a better host than whoever they're getting. Oh, you who get knows? Enough, hey, you you know, can't get I, enough Eubanks. I, <laughs> wish them, I wish them only the best, you know. Sure. Yeah, cool. Like they're I told getting you, Bob, I'm, they're I'm, getting uh, Bob Barker. I, I'm 83, but I tell everybody I'm 70 plus shipping and handling. You know, so okay. it's all right. <laughs> so, like, tell us now what you're doing now. Okay, we talked about me being in the rodeo world, and right. I right. wrote and did that whole thing. But I had a lot of trouble. I had had to have both hips replaced. I had to have back surgery and. A friend of mine named Dan Metcalf, who's a well-renowned a soccer coach, he noticed that I was walking bent over, and he said, you're having some issues, aren't you? I said, yeah, I'm falling down in the whole nine yards. He said, come over to my house. So I went over to his house to work out, and during the next month, 
Dan invented the 60 up balance board. And guys, I want to tell you, it changed my life. Uh, I am no longer falling down. I, I am back playing golf. And it's the most wonderful apparatus anybody, I think, has ever invented. Because if you're having any kind of balance issues, you've got to, you've got to get a 60 up balance board because it, it changed my world in such a short period of time. And if you just go to the 60up.com and take a look at it, uh, I, I am so proud of this because this is what I want to do for the rest of my career. I want to help. And we've helped thousands of people with their balance issues with the 60 up balance board. It is just amazing. There's nothing else out there like it. It comes with a whole series of exercises. Uh, we're even on the, uh, the Facebook in the morning uh, for classes. And it's helped people with, with all kinds of diseases and all kinds of Parkinson's and all kinds of issues with balance. And, you know, balance is a big thing. I was falling down, but not anymore, man. I, wow. it, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, I can look anybody in the eye and say, it's wonderful. It will help you. You go to 60up.com, a warm up shirt, and check it out. Because if you, if your parents or anybody you know is having balance issues, it's terrible. And this will help them forever. It's my my, my father in law is having issues like that now, but uh, uh, he's got some, uh, I think, neuropathy. Um, would that would that help him? I mean, he's got some balance. Absolutely! Oh my God! Absolutely! You know, it 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 helps in so many different areas, and there, like I say, there's nothing else out there like it. But it changed my world in a very short period of time, and so we then took it to some friends and tried it with them. Did the same thing. So then we said, okay, we got to help the world, and we raised some money and took it public and. It, it's it's helped people all over the world. That's all I can tell you. It's so good. Wow. And it will extend your life if you're having balance issues. Well, I'm definitely going to look into it for my uh, for my father-in-law for sure. Oh, yeah. please do. And I have a, I have a friend who I, I I talked to you about who's having trouble with balance specifically now from bad knees and a bad back. And I think this would be a really good solution for him. Well, it works. And it works well, and it works pretty fast. If you give it consistency and give it time, you know, you see people walking like this, bent over. Their eyes are controlling where they're going. But if you're up here on the balance board, it's your brain and your body are working together. And that's what it teaches you. And it's just amazing. Cool. Wow. Did I do everything? Yeah, it looks, it looks very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks great. I mean, it's a little bunch to luck oh. with you. That that sounds great. Yeah. I took the class this morning. You know, Dan Metcalf, uh, the inventor, he has classes every Tuesday and and Thursday morning on Facebook at nine a.m. Pacific time. And I took I take the classes every every week. And if you give it consistency, it will just keep helping you and helping you. Like I say, I'm playing golf again. Awesome. Before I couldn't even hardly even walk. <laughs> Man, that's but I'm awesome. playing bad golf, you know. <laughs> well, well, we'll stick that up on our Facebook page, right? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, we'll stick that up on your Facebook page, Chris. Oh, okay, let's all bye. say goodbye. Let's give Bob a big round of applause. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Say bye, you Bob. Good, man. Bye, Bob. Thank you so much. So remember, you can follow us on our website, the <laughs> www.thebbradio.com. We have all our present shows, our past shows, and we even have a podcast. And you can find us on YouTube. You go on YouTube and subscribe, make a comment, tell us how much you love us. Otherwise, I'm going to have to come looking for you. (laughs) You can also follow us on Instagram and see us on Twitter. Craig will tell you where. (laughs) Yes, it's it's a Twitter. It's the BBB Radio Podcast at Twitter. Tune in next week to more Bitchin' Baby Boomers.